What's going on, you guys? Welcome to a live edition of It's Real to Us, the wrestling podcast. I am Anthony DeMarc. Wait, what just happened there? We're doing a podcast. So, so we're still live, though, on YouTube, right? Yeah. What the hell just happened? <laughs> this is Tiny Mike. We just what? got done watching Bash in Berlin. We're going to go over everything that happened, give you our reactions, the fallout. We're going to talk about it all. So, Tiny Mike, it makes sense to start with how Bash in Berlin kicked off, and that is with Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens. Two baby faces. They went at it. They threw every single move they had at each other, and in the end, Cody Rhodes stood tall. What did you think about this match? What do you want to talk about? It was a good match, but it was what you expected. I didn't get anything outside of the expectations. Very good. Better than I thought in that proponent. Like, hard hitting, fast pace, hit our spots, this, that, whatnot. I don't know. It's just it's, it's exactly what I thought I was getting. So that brings it down for me a little bit. But it was good. Well, the thing I loved most about it was that WWE, they talked up the idea of Cody Rhodes having a knee injury on Friday. And then during the match, it appeared as if Cody Rhodes tweaked his knee and Kevin Owens refused to take advantage of the situation. Kevin Owens didn't have the killer instinct to get the job done. He couldn't go back to being a prize fighter and doing what was necessary, whether it was attacking Cody Rhodes' knee or the fact that he didn't hit an apron powerbomb. Cody Rhodes just escaped with the title because Kevin Owens didn't have the killer instinct. It's the Will Ospreay storyline. It's the, I can't do it. I can't hurt this guy with this move. No. If he does it, he might have had a different WWE World Heavyweight Champion. No heel turn. Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, they're both baby faces. Do you think that we get a heel turn in the future? Or is this just a sign that both of these guys are going to be faces? I'm going to twist. I'm going to ask that to you. Okay, the WWE Championship title picture what do you think they do with it? Well, I thought that Kevin Owens was going to turn heel so that way he could feud with Cody Rhodes for the next couple of months. But now that that doesn't seem like that's the case. Now you can't have Cody and Kevin feud for a couple of months. Why not? So you don't think uh, Kevin gets another chance? What if he turns heel on SmackDown? I think it was a house show pay-per-view and they needed to put a match together and they were able to tell a short, brief story. So, in terms of it being a house show pay-per-view, 13,000 people, uh, it, it was... We it, were just live for two hours. We were dogging it for only being 13,000. Don't use that against no, me. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to your point. It was in an arena. It wasn't a stadium. So, it didn't feel like this was the biggest uh, pay-per-view in the world. It felt rather tame. But, with that being said, I think Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens over-delivered on expectations. Yeah, I'll agree with that. And I think... Randy and Gunther under-delivered, so it kind of negates. We'll get to Randy. Gunther. We'll get there. We'll get there in a little we'll bit. Um, but I-, I loved, especially during uh, our live stream, you were talking about when Cody Rhodes hits three crossroads, he has a 167% chance of winning the match. Oh, Steiner math? Yeah, do you still stand by that? The Steiner math made sense. He hit the three crossroads and he won. Well, he hit a third crossroad Which and win. bumped he- it up to 167% chance of winning. Okay. So, Cody defeats Kevin Owens. What happens in the uh, future? If it's not Kevin Owens, who do you think it's is Cody Rhodes' a, next uh, opponent? Climbing the ladder of mediocrity until we get to the big story they want to tell at WrestleMania with uh, either the Bloodline, The Rock, whoever, whatever Polynesian is out there. Does Austin Theory get an opportunity at Cody Rhodes' WWE Championship? No. <laughs> Not Uh, happening. Okay, who would you guys like to see Cody Rhodes face next? Let us know. Reach out to us. You can find us on X, Instagram, and TikTok. I need some adversity out of Cody. I need him to win an eight-man match. An eight-man match? An eight-man match. What does that even mean? Let's put Cody up against, like, seven guys. We need Nick Aldis to come out and be like, all right, he's the guy. Here's half the roster. And then it's like Corbin, Apollo, Andrade, Carmelo, Elton, and Kit. And then, like, one other jobber, and he beats them all. So you need Cody just to just destroy all of the undercard wrestlers. I, I need Cody to become more Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man, where he's, like, just, like, I'm the effing man. I do it all. Stop me. And then Dwayne comes in as Black Adam instead of the final boss. Okay, you're going off the rails right now. Cody beats Kevin Owens. Who do you guys want to see Cody go up against next? We are at It's Real to Us on X Instagram and TikTok oh, on YouTube. We are at It's Real to Us 1. Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, 1 to 5. What do you give it? I give Cody Rhodes, uh, WWE World Champion, three American flags out of five. I'm not going to do the boom and doom thing. It's, a, it's obnoxious. Uh, match, predictable. The way it unraveled at the end was exactly how we called it live on stream. 
even with uh, Kevin Owens being upset and then raising his hand. Saw it a mile away, but it was a good match. So the predictability knocks it down, but the deliverance upon the match and the way they, they got there brings it up a little bit. I give you a three out of five. I am glad that we didn't get a heel turn. Uh, I was originally on record stating that Kevin Owens was going to turn heel. Ended up not. It was a good old-fashioned face-versus-face match, clean down the middle. I was heavily entertained. Uh, I don't know if there was ever a moment where I thought Cody was going to lose, so that might knock it down a little bit for me. Still very much enjoyed this match. I think this was my favorite match on the card. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. So, leaving that there, moving forward, the next match of the night, we saw Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair successfully, cleanly beat the Unholy Union to become two-time WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. I picked... Jade to turn on Bianca, turn heel, and start a singles program with both of them. That doesn't appear to be the case, Michael. Uh, was this the right book, and what did you think of the match? Of course it was the right book. How could you say it wasn't the right book? I'm, a I'm just asking. I'm asking you now. I'm twisting your words. What, 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 what do you have against uh, Bianca and Jade becoming new women's tag team champions again? I have nothing against it because I think they are clearly the more powerful and imposing tag team, and having them atop your division is just what's best for the division exactly, in its entirety. Exactly. So, Get your big brand stars on TV. Give them a reason to be the focal point. Alba Fire. What's the other one? Isla Dawn. They got there two months. They were the one Scottish group of people that was like, okay, they can win. and Have your fun. Take your pictures. Long run, who the hell's buying their merchandise? Who the hell's turning into Monday Night Raw being like, I let Dawn? Nobody. Nobody. Bianca Belair, jacked. Jay Cargill, more jacked. You know what I like? Jacked women throwing across people who are little teeny bitty women like they did in this match. Awesome match. Didn't think it would be nearly as good as it was. Got to give a uh, shout out to Jade for not fumbling a move for once. Great job. And who doesn't love a new champion being crowned? I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. I don't think it was as entertaining as the Kevin Owens-Cody Rhodes match, so just below for me, 3.5 out of 5. I, again, am giving three bicep pumps out of five. Uh, the, the ladies, uh, Bel Air. So this was the same for you as the Cody Rhodes-Kevin Owens match? Yes, because predictability-wise, I did not think they were. it was as open telling that these two ladies would come through. Okay. So that's my biggest gripe with uh, Kevin Owens and Cody. You had a chance to curveball me. You had a chance to do something fun. You didn't. Cookie cutter. This one, all right. Big muscle girls looked good. Jay didn't mess up anything. Made the right saves. Made the right big spots. Put the title on them. Get more, more, uh, uh, more eyes on the show with what's actually relevant rather than the two Scots. Okay. So you are three... Three out of five, three out of five. I'm three uh, bicep pumps out three of five. Three bicep pumps out of five. And not booms. Not booms. Bicep pumps. Bicep pumps. Jade and Bianca pick up the win. Congratulations to them. Let's see what they can do in the women's tag team division moving forward. What's, but, that? What's that thing they do? Oh, yeah. They go like this. Ah! I'm still watching all these Gunther you, highlights. You, like, chopped me a hundred times well, today. I, I, it's Bash in Berlin. It's, it's Gunther. Ah, my chest is getting red. Good. So moving on now, next we're going to talk about the third match of the night, which was the personal rivalry. Drew McIntyre and CM Punk, the second time that they've squared off one-on-one, -on -one, only this time it was a strap match. And I'm going to say oh. this. I don't know how you feel about it. I was entertained with this match throughout. CM Punk ended up winning the match. He got his bracelet back. He hit six go-to-sleeps on Drew McIntyre, and he successfully touched all four turnbuckles and won the match. It's enough go to sleep. It's the whole week's worth of sleep. Good match. I think they left some things hidden, which is what I want because it's only match two out of the three. You got your third one coming up. I don't know how Seth gets back involved here. Don't know when he comes back or whatever it is. I think Seth comes back and goes for Bronson Reed, so I think you have... A, I don't a, want that, though, because you can't have Bronson Reed go over Seth. No, look, you don't want that, but it allows you to give Drew and CM Punk just the one-on-one -on -one attention that their feud deserves right now. Let's be honest. Throwing CM, Seth Rollins into that match is a little bit of a wrench. It, it doesn't feel like, uh, like the payoff that we want. We've seen one win for Drew McIntyre, one win for CM Punk. I want one final... Okay. Awesome match between... But I do think you're going to get some kind of shenanigans with Seth in this third match because that's how the story keeps going. You get your blow off. Okay, so-and-so won the match due to this. Now we get all three of them involved because I think that's the ultimate blow off is Drew, Seth, Punk. 
I feel like that could be a mania worthy match. Exactly. So like regarding the match itself, thought it was good. Good match, but just the, like I mentioned on our live stream, the, the mini game of tapping the corners. It's fun in the moment, but it just it kind of kills any long term love for a match like that. I think it was, it's very gimmicky, the strap match, but I think that both Punk and McIntyre utilized the strap uniquely enough to keep me continually engaged. There was a point where McIntyre was going for the fourth turnbuckle. CM Punk jumped out of the ring and he pulled McIntyre away, and it's just like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think they did a very good job in making the uh, strap useful in regard to like how to approach the match yes because like on multiple occasions so and so would jump out or the other guy would jump out or you'd have to drag the guy across to get to the spot like they utilize that well i completely agree and they kicked the crap out of each other they slapped each other with the strap a bunch of times they had welts over their back and i was entertained throughout the the, the bracelet in the the drawers though was a little you loved the idea that drew mcintyre had the cm punk bracelet in his wrestling trunks the entire match Yes, because it's a very good disrespectful move to have loved ones wrapped around your... your Genitalia. Your, yes. Uh, heel move, right move. Good job. What I didn't love is how proudly uh, CM Punk put that on as he hit the fourth turnbuckle. Like, all right, I got his, his D-sweat all over my <laughs> arm and as I win this match. Yeah, it kind of makes me think you got something up on you. Yes, maybe, but in the long term, CM Punk won the match, which is the most important thing, and that's what... Got bad blood. Now we get to go to Hell Bad Blood. Hell in a Cell? Question, question? Do we have Hell in a Cell? Uh, so that is a question for another day. But before we move on, Drew McIntyre, 0-3 when fighting in Europe. Oh, lost to Roman Reigns' so clash at the castle. Lost to Damian Priest's clash at the castle. And now he lost in Bash in Berlin to CM Punk. My guy, I Drew, mean, just can't get a win it's, it's, over the pond. It is booking that have that we have seen year in, year out. Anytime you're in your hometown, what happens? You lose. I was over in the States. Bailey, I think, is 0-17 in San Jose, California. <laughs> Drew McIntyre, 0-3 in Europe. And you know what's going to happen next time he's there? He's going to lose. I think I liked everything about this match except for the fact that it was so predictable. But that goes towards the card in general. Um, Whole show was predictable. I think I'm going to give this a 3.75 out of 4. So just above the women's tag team match, just below Cody Kevin Owens. Very, very good. Just too predictable. This is my match of the night. It wasn't a strong night by any means, but keeps the story rolling. I'm still interested in how they're going about it. CM Punk looked good. That's the big thing. CM Punk looked really good. Did not win by some cheap, wonky finish or whatnot. He won in a... D- definitive way he beat drew clean in the same situation drew was in it was a strap match hey i whipped you i hit the gts 17 times uh y- you trash drew you that's, trash yeah that's what happened you trash drew i think i gave it a 4.25 on the street oh wow so so this was your favorite match this was my match of the night and it's funny because i don't like the uh the the, the 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 mario party mini game of clicking the corners i'd rather it just be like all right we're stuck to each other we're gonna fight to the death pin submission yeah i'd rather that but I thought it was pretty cool the way the story is going. I like that they brought the bracelet into it afterwards. I think it's disrespectful that he had it along in his groin the whole time, getting all that sweat up on the bracelet. Um, I'm kind of overthinking that, but I think it's really funny. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a four. Okay. So you're giving it a four? No, I'm going to give it a three, seven, five. Okay. So you're talking yourself down from the four point two. Psych four, because I like punk. Great. Let's talk about the mixed tag team match, the Terror Twins versus the Judgment Day. Rhea Ripley, Damian Priest were able to get a bit of revenge over the Judgment Day's Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio after they successfully beat them. However, we did not get a Dominic Mysterio riptide. And that, for me, kills this match. I, I, it's what I, I was. Say it kills it. It kills it for it's me. It's just. I feel like a lot of this show was house show, Monday Night Raw, SmackDown. Like, like nothing really popped out to me, and this match is like that as well. Yeah, this. I feel like I watched a Monday Night Raw main event with these two. I, I think that's a great wasn't way. bad, but it's not. All right, you're a pay per view like once a month. Like it wasn't that standard. Uh huh. No okay. real cliffhanger either. The Terrakins got the comeuppance. Yeah, we're going into bad blood. Ha ha. Yeah. No uh, surprises. Very much a raw main event. And I think that goes back to the overall like theme of the show was 
13,000 people, it's in an arena, uh, the matches are kind of by the numbers, and it just it feels very formulaic. So, uh, unfortunately, I, I think that th this match, the tag team match, ranks a little lower for me what's, uh, in, in like for all of the matches. What's the direction you think Judgment Day goes in now? Um, I are we think doing Damien versus Finn. Are we doing so? Rhea Ripley pinned Liv Morgan. I think that Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, they are going to have another championship match down the road, and then we all want to see Damien versus Finn Balor. So those matches are going to happen. It's a matter of whether it happens in Bad Blood or they kick it down the can and um, they have it somewhere else. There's also a Saudi show coming up, so definitely it seems as if those feuds are far from over. This felt like a pit stop almost into like a larger and bigger match now random question terror twins are clearly outnumbered how would you have them help uh settle the odds a little bit who could they recruit our truth immediately comes to mind wow the man who wow has, why is that not being done already the man who has continually wanted to be a part of the judgment day who was cast aside thrown away refused entry into the group finally can get in the good graces of Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest. But even then, still only a five-on-three. They'd still need a little bit more help. Braun Strowman's had issues with the Judgment Day. I, I think that's just our truth. He's just our truth. That's he, enough. He comes back as K-Quick. Rhea, Damian were dominant throughout. You saw Liv and Dom depend on outside interference from the Judgment Day to really have a chance. But even then... The Terror Twins were too much to handle, and they took care of business. Rhea Ripley pinned Liv Morgan. What do you give it? One out of five. It just seems like a stepping stone to the next part of the story. We have bad blood coming up. The match was okay. I like that Rhea went kind of nuts and started clotheslining uh, Dominic. That was fun. Damian got his butt whooped on the outside, but kind of made a little comeback. I'll give it another three. Kind of want to give it a little bit less, but they didn't do anything wrong. For me, this was the worst match of the night. I felt that it just lacked something. There was, yeah, there it was, definitely lacked something. Yeah, it, something was missing. It wasn't bad, but it, it didn't feel like you were saying like a premium live event match. It felt very much like a Raw match. And for that, given the stakes, given the spotlight, the stage, I wanted more. I wanted that Riptide. And the fact that I didn't get a Riptide to Dominic Mysterio makes me upset. Three out of five, my uh, least favorite match of the night, which then brings us to the main event, Randy Orton versus Gunther, the World Heavyweight Championship match. The crowd made this match. They were heavily behind the uh, hometown hero, Gunther, throughout he's not from germany he's still the hometown hero the people wanted him he was the favorite okay the crowd was behind him they loved him and that helped intensify what was a slow match in my opinion would you agree very let down with this match uh very let down very slow match that's kind of how randy matches go that's kind of how gunther matches go um yeah it's a real shame that they it seems like they just banked off of okay Gunther's going to get the biggest applause or interest of the night, so we'll put him on last. And when you deliver a match like this, I'm leaving the pay-per-view upset. And that's that's tough because it was overall, pay-per-view was okay. Cookie cutter is the way to put it. Mm -hmm. And you're sending me home on the most sour way possible. I agree with what you're saying. It was cookie cutter, but it was unique seeing the crowd behind Gunther. It was unique seeing Gunther wrestle as a face, Randy wrestled as a heel in this match. I don't know if anybody is going to argue me on that, but you don't poke wrestlers in the eye. He was disrespecting the crowd a little bit. Randy was 100% the heel. So the, dy the dynamic between the wrestlers was interesting. The fact that Orton sent Gunther through a table was fun. I didn't like the end. Felt like a little anticlimactic to me. Um, Randy was trying to get out, uh, you know, get out of Gunther's grasp, and he did, only for the ring general to bring him back into the choke hold and the sleeper hold and win in the match the RKO spot was a lot of fun but not great felt like they could have done a little bit more and I think their match at King and Queen of the Ring was better but I think that was a match was a hundred percent better yeah but I, I leave this match and I'm like you, it's like I was looking for a little bit more out of Randy I feel like Randy's the one that sold me short so was that your least favorite match of the night and what do you give it one to five it's tricky because is it the worst match of the night no it's the main event though, so you got to hold it on a different, little, different little, 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 different little pedigree. It was very slow. 
I didn't believe Randy had it at any point in the match, even after the first RKO. Um, Gunther didn't do anything shock and awe for me. It felt like, again, like, like okay, we got these Germans money. We have the house show. <laughs> We got let's them. let's just have the guy win and then put his hand up at the end of the show and send everybody home happy. And it's like you got most of your people not in Germany watching this match and they're just probably wincing and trying to find positives like we are right now. So where does it fall then on your board? Last. This is last. So, this is last. so what was the grade? One to five. I'll give it a two seven five. Wow, that's low. Was it a good match? That I didn't think it was a bad match. I don't think it's a two seven five. For a, a pay per view main event, and especially when they just did Randy versus uh Gunther a couple months ago at King of the Ring, and it was a way better match in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. It was slow, it was dragging, it was Predictable. Yeah, that's predictable. the that's the big word. This match and a lot of the matches on the card were predictable. And you go back to SummerSlam. That was really predictable, too. So the Triple H era has fallen under this predictability umbrella. And I think because of that, it lessens the overall grade for me of what the card. So let's just talk about the card overall in general. and We'll send everybody on their way. I think that we've mentioned it a lot already on this podcast. 13,000 people felt like a house show. Cookie cutter matches. Everything was predictable. So because of that, I can't give this anything higher than a three. Really, it was it was kind of a lame pay per view. Yeah, the more I'm sitting with it, lame. Very lame show. Very lame um, show. I give it a three out of respect. Some fun spots. Well, I think Cody and Kevin definitely delivered. They more got than the crowd expected. hot. They they did a great job. And you know what? The, the, you well, that's know? probably my match of the night. Actually, yeah, I think so. I think that's. I mean, the strap match was good too, but the best part I think of the show overall was the crowd. I think the crowd. The crowd was really good. The crowd helped make some underwhelming matches better. You know, al- although maybe it was a little bit of a letdown. We all knew this wasn't going to be the biggest and best show ever. This is WWE just like landmarking like events. It's like, oh, okay, we're going to give Gunther his moment in uh, Berlin. Well, just like they gave Rhea Ripley yeah. her moment in Australia. Australia. So it's a lot of prep for bad blood. A lot of prep for bad blood. But what did you think of the show? What was your favorite match? What would you rate the card overall? Let us know. You can reach out to us on X, Instagram, and TikTok at It's Real to Us. And on YouTube, we are at It's Real to Us. One, I I'm Anthony the Mark. And I'm Tiny Mike. Shout out my boy, AJ Vegas. How you doing? Thank you all for watching. We appreciate it. And we will see you next time on It's Real to Us, the wrestling podcast. Ow!